said it again. He said, I am the living one. I was there. And behold, it means it's amazing. What a good news that I die, but I am alive. Not for some time. Not for a lot of time. I'm alive forevermore. Will you say an amen there? And he said, John, are you afraid of death? I got the keys of death. John was brought to the island of Patmos to die. So Jesus says, don't be afraid. John's emotion after seeing Jesus was a holy fear. John has spent three years in the flesh and a half with Jesus. Jesus slept. He was hungry. He ate. He saw him, but he has never seen him in that light before. Like Isaiah, when he said, Woo to me, I cry, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among the people of unclean lips, and my eye have seen the king, the Lord. Almighty. What happened to Isaiah happened to John. In fact, it happened to Moses. For Moses, he only saw the back of his glory. What did John say? Point number one. John saw Jesus' clothing. In the middle of the lampstand, he says there was one like the Son of Man. His robe touching down to his feet. You see, the clothing Jesus wore signifies something. It was not just something he had, just pulled out of the heavenly closet. The long rope signifies honor. It signifies dignity. In Isaiah 6 verse 1 to 3, when Isaiah saw God, he wore the same attire, the golden kettle Jesus was using. It represented the righteousness of the priest. So Jesus was saying, I am no more the man of Galilee. I am in honor. I must be respected. John, I am gather, not just that, as a righteous God. You saw me carry children. I am in my real personality. The book of Revelation. In the, I wish I had time to explain with when he wore Jesus' hair and his hair and his hair were white like a wool, like a snow. And if you read it carefully, the witnesses of Jesus had described as a wool and as a snow. It's a symbol to indicate that John lacked the grammatical expression to express what he saw. The light from the hair and the personality was beaming. He doesn't know what to use to describe. So he said, like a wool, like, then like a snow. John was amazed. Jesus was saying, I am in my pure state. White hair, beard, signify purity and it signify holiness. You read Matthew 13, verse 43. The case was made that Jesus will come like the son of righteousness. His feet were told they were like bronze. The feet were like bronze. And they glow like it was in the furnace. We are caused to think of the strength we read in the description. You read Malachi 4, verse 1 to 3. At any rate, the Lord on his feet, it means I am the most active God you can ever see. I am the most powerful God. You see, the bronze was in its latent energy form. It means agility. It means proactiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus, you read Revelation 19 verse 15. He's saying that I will come 
and my judgment will be dispensed in righteousness. You sit before me. You stand before me. John, I will dispense judgment very soon. But it will be a judgment. That will be a judgment of purity. Talking about his voice. In those days, there were no PA systems. The best thing John can say, the loudest noise they know in those days was the voice of many waters and thunder. So John was describing that the voice was so clear, the voice was so loud that I can identify. John, Jesus made a comment in Matthew 7 verse 23 when he says on the day of judgment we will hear the voice. He will say depart from me. I never knew you. Or he will tell some people well done. It was the same voice. We talk about his feet. That will talk about judgment. Then John says the voice that I hear it was like a voice of many waters. Ladies and gentlemen Jesus in summary was saying I am God. And he gave an assurance. He said, do not be afraid because I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. The untold truth about the Father. We don't hear Jesus described in this anger. We are always told he suffered and died. But ladies and gentlemen, the Jesus, that is why when we are going to speak about prayer, miracles, you can't go to church and be speaking to this God as if he's your co-equal. He is God. When John saw him, he was dying. When Isaiah saw him, he was dying. But today, you go to churches and we speak to this God like he's our maid or our gate boy. Who are you? Who do you think you are? And you come before a holy God. And you cannot make your requests. You cannot sit before him. And listen to him in peace and in quietness. Because we don't read the book of Revelation. So we don't know who, who this God is. Ladies and gentlemen, the untold truth. Jesus sent forth himself to the to John through the book of Revelation that he is the creator. The untold truth about truth's creatorship. You read the book of Revelation, Jesus makes some claim. Revelation 3.14. He says, I am the faithful and the true witness. The beginning of God's creation. What does this mean? What is Jesus intending to say? When you look at it very carefully, the term beginning is a rendition of the Greek, Akei. It is used about 45 times in the New Testament. And when it is used, the only meaning it means is cause or source. Akei. The Jehovah Witnesses use this test and they say that Jesus was a created being. No. You go to the Greek. This statement, when it's okay, when it is used, it just means so the text will have read if it were translated differently. In context, Jesus was saying, I am the faithful and I am the true witness. I am the beginning. It means I am the cause or I am the source of all the creation of God. Will somebody not say an amen here? Yeah. If he is the cause of creation, if he is the source of creation, he cannot be a creature. It means he is God. Jesus, that is portrayed on many puppets, is like a boyfriend. He is not a boyfriend. He is God. I wish I had time. I will have given you some Hindu scriptures and Buddhist scriptures and Islamic Quran scriptures and buttress the point that Hinduism, Jesus is indicated as God. In Buddhism, he's indicated as God. 
in Islam, he is indicated as God. If time permits, I will share with you tomorrow. Jesus is not just a body, he is God. In other words, when you read the Bible, John 1, verse 3, he said, All things were made through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. Now, this statement was not made by Jesus himself directly. We, it is alluded to. In the book of Revelation, Jesus is saying that, I, Jesus, I am the sword. Other biblical passage are said to this. You read Colossians 1.16. For by him, Paul right, all things were created that are in heaven or that are on the earth. Things that are visible, things that are invisible. Whether they be thrones, whether they be dominion, or whether they be principalities or powers, all things. And when the Bible says all, it means all, including you. In fact, including your sexual organs. That is why you cannot use them not to glorify. If God created all things, he created the eye, he created the ear, he created the tongue, he created the sexual organ. So when you use that which God created to abuse him, one day he will ask you, all things were created through him and for him. Corinthians 8, 56. Yet for us, there is one God. The Father, of whom are all things, and we are for him. And one Lord, Jesus. He created space. He created everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the sustainer. Jesus by whom also he made the world. What can I say? Acts 17 verse 28 say, For in him we live and move and have our being. In other words, for him we live. In other words, for him we move. In other words, for him we have our being. You are here. Ladies and gentlemen, not because of Muhammad, not because of Buddha, not because of Buhari, not because of Confucius. We are here, not because of any good man. The Bible says, for in him we live. Whether Christian, Muslim, whoever, you live in him. In him you move. Did you go to work today? Did you go to school today? Did you move from a place to place? The only reason when they break, you can wake up is because of this God. His name is J E S U S. Yeah. I love this God. I love this God. Ladies and gentlemen, for the sake of time, the Bible says, Jesus' creatorship. It's not just that. What startled me, what amazed me, was the untold truth that is not told about his messiahship. The book of Revelation make it so explicit. I'll just start from some two. Look at this. When you read the book of Revelation, chapter 5, there were some seals that must be opened. The whole world. Nobody was found. No Nigerian was found. No Ghanaian was found. No African was found. Then one of the four elders spoke to John and says, but one of the elders, John started to cry. The destiny of the world will be destroyed. World was in a balance. If nobody can open the seal, then one of the elders says, do not wait. Behold, it means it's so surprising that the lion, prefix with a definite article, the lion of the tribe of Judah, there is a certain lion. You know, there is a difference between.
between a lion and the lion. He says, the lion from not the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Judah. He says that the roots of David, he has prevailed. He has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose each seven seal. Will somebody say amen there? Amen. The lion of the tribe of Judah. If I if you read Genesis chapter 49, verse 9, Christ was born to be from the tribe. It was a prophecy. It was fulfilled in Matthew 1, verse 2. The figure of lion signifies strength. Revelation 9, verse 8. Revelation 9, 17. Revelation 10, verse 3. Revelation 13, verse 2. Revelation 13, verse 5. You see, and Christ has won the victory. Did you hear? They say the lion from the tribe of Judah, he has prevailed. It means Jesus, as a Messiah, promised that he will come. He has won the battle. He has fought the battle. He has prevailed. You know the scepter. We are told Genesis 49 verse 9 10. He says, shall not depart from Judah. Nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. Until Shiloh shall come. And he concludes by saying, and unto him shall the gatherings of the people be. This promise came to be. If I have time, I will have gone through one by one the prophetic implication of Jesus' birth. Ladies and gentlemen, in Revelation 22, verse 16, we are told, I, Jesus is speaking, I am, you know, he always say, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the truth. He says, I am the roots and the offspring of who? David. The bright and the morning star. My dear brothers, the messiahship of Jesus. No wonder the day Jesus will come, he will not come like a lamb. He's going to come like a lion. Lion comes with power. Lion comes with agility. Yeah, lion comes with strength. Jesus is saying, John, let the world be aware. I came like a lamb. But the next time this world will see me, I will not be the lamb that was crucified on the cross. I will come like the lion from the tribe of David. I am from the root. I am the offspring of David. I will bring judgment to this world. That is why the book of Revelation says, in Revelation 1 verse 7, it says, Behold, he comes with the cloud. In Revelation 22, he said, I come with my reward to give everyone according to us as where shall be. I wish I had time to deal with his sacrifice and told truth about his sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, he has gone through all. I love this concept of it. He deserves our worship. The book of Revelation says, no, he's not just a creator. No, he's not just God. No, he's just not a messiah. He is to be worshipped. How did he put it? Revelation put it this way. And I read, he said, now, when he got taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. What did they say? Each of them were having a car and a golden bowl full of incense which are prayers of the saints, and they sung a new song. In the new Jerusalem, those who would adhere to the truth that will be unfolding this way, those who will follow, a day will come in a place called heaven. A day will come in God's own place where we will walk on the street of gold. We will sing a new song. We will sing the song of the Lamb and the song of David. And they were saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal. For you were slain and you have redeemed us to God by your blood. Why did he deserve our worship? Because he died for us. He died. And all have made us kings. And you have made us priests to our God, and we shall reign on this earth. And you see, Revelation
Revelation 5, verse 8, you read the verse 12, it says, and the whole congregation was shouting, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, to receive riches, to receive wisdom, to receive strength, to receive honor, to receive glory, to receive blessing. Will you not say amen there? That is why those who claim they are worshiping God and are worshiping him falsely. Be careful. My brother, be careful. Are you sure you are worshiping the God of this book? Revelation 14 verse 7 says, Fear God and give glory to him because we are in the judgment hour and worship him who must we worship? The one who is the creator. By him the world was made. We move we have our being and we live because of him. This is the God who deserves our worship. So the book of Revelation says, because he is our God, you cannot worship him the way you desire. You can't worship him the way you will. You can't worship him the way you think. He has conquered. He has won the battle. And in Revelation 19 verse 11 he said now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse signifying victory and he that sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and make war and the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen and followed him on white horses and now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he shall strike the nation i'm going to explain this to come when you read it jesus has won the battle but in revelation as i close tonight he is also called the lamb in revelation chapter one verse i he says unto him that love us and wash us from our sins with what? His own blood. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 12, he said, Worthy is the lamb that was slain. In Revelation 12 verse 11, he said, They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of his testimony. In Revelation 13 verse 8, he says, The book of life is the lamb's book that was slain from the foundation of the world. In Revelation 14 verse 6, he says, He is God's lamb, which is the everlasting gospel. He will be called to the marriage feast. And he will call that. He was clothed with a vesture. Deep in blood. Revelation 22 verse 17. Whoever will let him take the waters of life freely. Jesus is known to be the lamb of revelation. But he says, I am the way. I am the untold truth about the truth. Are you looking for truth? No. He is the truth. They brought him before Annas. They brought him before Caiaphas. They brought him before none the person, the Sahindrin. They brought him before no other person than Pilate. They brought him before none other than Herod. They brought him not before any a person, before Pilate the second time. And this is where the message ends tonight. And when they brought him before Pilate, there was a discussion. And Pilate was bold to ask him, Are you a king? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am king. For this cause, I was born. For this cause, I have come into the world that I should bear witness of the whole, the truth. Everyone who is of the truth, hears my voice. If you are in this room, if you are listening wherever you are, if you can hear God through his word, you hate the truth. Anyone who loves the truth who hear Jesus and the pilot ask, what is truth? 
the saddest question I've ever heard all my life. Truth was in front of Pilate. Pilate was blind and he was still asking what is truth? There is somebody here today 